Hey guys, and welcome to the channel today. If you've ever had a project or a paint job, a model, maybe it's even just a piece of a model that you've struggled to have motivation or you're scared to paint, it's just kind of this mental hurdle for you to overcome and sit down and actually work on. Today, we are going to talk about that exact issue. So for me, the project that I have kind of always been daunted, put off, never really worked on is doing larger models. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of painting large monsters or tanks or things like that. And so it goes that something like a Titan model, something like an Imperial Knight model are rather intimidating to me. Well, because of that, I put a Canis Rex, however you pronounce it, into my Grey Knights army because I knew I wanted one, but I also knew I needed to push myself to do something I'm not comfortable with. So today we're going to look at how I go about learning the ins and outs of painting a larger model. Now, a couple of things to note before we really get started is I knew I wanted to do it largely without the airbrush. Number one, because I think a lot of people maybe don't have access to that and they'd like to see how to paint these larger models without the airbrush. But also just because sometimes it's a little bit more fun for me to sit at my painting desk and work on my models that way as opposed to being in my painting booth and airbrushing them and doing that. There will be some airbrushing, but I don't think we'll even catch a video of that. So today's video is going to explore how do I go about painting this rather large model using a brush. Now you can see that I've got this in a bunch of different pieces. I've not glued it all together and I'm working in one large model, but instead a bunch of different pieces. And there's a reason for this. Number one, it's a little bit easier to handle something that is this size, a, a single arm. I, I can hold it easier. I can pin it easier and work with it that way. But another reason is because I can get inside parts that I normally wouldn't be able to. Now, if I was doing this with an airbrush, I would actually have this in a lot more pieces. I would have these armor panels that are, are on the legs and this big top that's, that's here. They would all be off because I'd have to airbrush them separate than what's on top so I, or what's below them so I didn't have to worry about getting paint on them. But we've largely put together the armor panels on everything because we're gonna paint it by brush, we can get in there. The other plus is that I don't have this massive unwieldy model that is, is hard to pick up, that if you drop, it's, it's, it's done. You've got chances of pieces breaking, you've got chances of parts flying everywhere. And to be honest, I have dropped and knocked over so many models in my painting and, and throughout the process of getting them done that I just understand the risk that is inherent to being painted by me. There's just a risk there for these poor models. Uh, so they're in a bunch of different pieces and that kind of lends a, a little bit of ease to getting to them and working on them. So that's kind of where we're going to start. And I know this is going to be a process. It's gonna take days, many days of painting these and focusing on these. But I wanna really quickly talk about getting past that mental hurdle. How do we get to that point where it's almost like the fear has us frozen and keeps us from painting a model we really want to paint? Uh, for me, I've had this sitting for months and I haven't primed it. I haven't done anything with it because I was simply paralyzed by the fear of, I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. I don't feel like I'm comfortable with it. What if I screw it up? What if I get into the project and I just feel lost or I feel like I'm doing a terrible job? Whatever it may be that we're feeling. And let me encourage you on a couple of things to hopefully help you get past that same fear that I'm feeling and have been feeling and jump in and just enjoy painting your models. Number one is this. It's totally okay to not know what you're doing. It's totally okay to sit down with a model and feel lost. The only way you actually get past that is to start painting it. 
There's no way you can prepare yourself to the point where you are 100% confident because at some point you're going to feel lost in the process because it's new. And when it's new, you don't have that comfort. Maybe you're at that point in your painting where you understand that there's an ugly stage to painting good models. If you paint non-metallic metal a lot, you know that there's a lot of that 90% of non-metallic metal doesn't look good because those final stages really bring it out. There's a lot of different painting processes where it looks bad until you get to those final stages and you have to build up that confidence to know what that final stage is going to look like. So understand this, until you sit down and you start painting it, you will never have the confidence that you need to actually get it done. Number two is this, mistakes are okay. It's totally fine to paint a model and to do a rough job on it, to feel like you're making a lot of mistakes. I tell my two sons this when they paint all the time, it's paint. You can always take it off and you can always put more on. Mistakes are easy to cover. As long as you work in thin paints, especially you're not building texture on that model, it's so easy to come back in to fix your mistakes. It's not the end of the model. It's not the end of the project. It's okay. And what's going to make you a much better painter is when you sit down and you do those uncomfortable projects, those projects that scare you a little bit, those, those projects that give you some hesitation to even start, is once you start doing those, you're going to learn a lot of valuable lessons. I have no clue what I'm doing when it comes to painting this model here. But once I get started, I'm going to learn some things about painting models like this that I didn't know before. And I don't need to know them right now. Throughout this painting process, I'm going to grow. Painting is a journey. It's, it's a lot like working out. You're not going to jump in and automatically know everything and automatically be great. But the more you hit the gym, the more you get into nutrition, the more you do those things, the better you're going to become at it. So don't be scared because you don't know what you're doing. That's totally fine. The only way to actually know what you're doing is to go and do it. And let me say this, as somebody that enjoys making YouTube videos that hopefully people are enjoying watching my videos. Those things are great. I watch so many different YouTube tutorials. I love to watch different content creators, see what they're doing, gain inspiration, learn a lot from them. But ultimately, go and paint. That's where you're going to learn. That's where you're going to grow the most. If you had the option between watching my video and sitting down and painting yourself, go paint yourself. Go do the work. That's what's going to help you grow. You can learn some tips, you can learn some tricks, but ultimately you then have to go and put that paint on a model and learn how to use those tricks. So don't worry, we're all daunted about different things. We all have different skill sets, different projects, different things that make us nervous, that make us uncomfortable, that we're, we're a little bit scared, I think is the most accurate word to describe how I've felt about projects and models for me. That's totally normal, it's totally okay. But the only way to get past it is to grab it, sit down, create a game plan. I've spent a lot of time creating a game plan on how I want to paint this model. I have it all mapped out. I've got all my reference pictures. I've got everything that I need to sit down and work on this model, but it still makes me uncomfortable because I've not done it before and it's really not in my wheelhouse. Painting an unfamiliar infantry size model, that's something I get. Painting an unfamiliar character model, a prime mark or something like that, those are things that are still within my comfort zone. Painting a large robot is not within my skill sets, not within my wheelhouse, it's not within my comfort zone. And that's exactly why that's what we're going to be doing. Now I've made it a little bit easier because I'm painting Canis Rex, which means that I am going strictly off that color scheme. So I've got reference photos. I know exactly where I'm going with it. I simply need to execute the way that I think is my best way of painting this model. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to jump into the painting and then I'll see you guys again, probably in a couple days for the outro video. So I've gone ahead and I've painted in the white, I've painted in the reds. 
We're not going to look at those on video. It's pretty simple. Do that however you want. I just airbrushed it because it was fast and it was simple. But also I went and I painted the whole model in coal black. I'd already primed it in black. But as I always say, come back with a black color that you're going to use and use that instead of painting over your primer color. The importance to that is you make a mistake if you need to paint back over it, which we will, um, but even just any time, if you're gonna be using black, don't use your black primer as your base color because if you need to come back over and fix mistakes with it, you want a black color that's going to match. Um, and you may think all black is black, but it's not. So I used coal black and I airbrushed it on the entire model after priming. And that way, as I use my blacks later, which you'll see, they're going to match what I have as a base color. One of the most challenging aspects of this paint job as a whole was the fact that there are a lot of flat or smooth surfaces with the armor paneling and things like that that we had to get this metallic color on and one of the things with metallic colors is they can be very streaky uh, they can be very difficult to make smooth have a a rather smooth and more natural look to them where the brush strokes aren't showing up and it looks kind of sloppy so there's a couple of ways that you can do this with a brush to keep them from being sloppy to, to remove those brush strokes. And number one is to start with a pretty thin down paint. You're gonna notice as I paint this that it's not getting full coverage. You're still gonna see some of that black underneath it. And that's okay, that's fine because we're gonna come back and do this a second time. We would rather take our time and have to do it twice than for it to have those brush marks in it and for it to be really streaky. And on top of that, in some of our later steps, we're going to do some things that are going to smooth out the paint job as well. But we basically just want to keep from getting it, we want to keep it from being as streaky as we possibly can. So water down your metallics a little bit. This paint that I'm using is actually made to be used through an airbrush, so it's already watered down. It's a very smooth paint, but with this, I have to control how much I have on the brush and really move it around and make sure that I kind of do it quickly so that, because once it starts drying and you start moving around then, that's when you really get a lot of brush strokes. Another thing that I had to be aware of is that a lot of these parts here, I wanted to break up the model and not just do it all metallic. I wanted to leave a lot of these black parts that we're going to work on later with some edge highlighting to kind of make it stand out and make it a little bit different than just everything is going to be metallic on this. So we want to kind of be careful that we're not hitting those spots but also understanding that we can come back with our coal black paint and fix any of those mistakes before we go back to doing our edge highlights on our black parts. So it's kind of a mix of control where your brush is going. You don't want to be incredibly sloppy because that's just going to make more work for us later with cleaning up, but also it's possible to clean up. Sometimes as painters, we get too focused on painting within the lines, not making mistakes, but understand you can clean up those mistakes fairly easily. So basically this is all gonna get one coat and then it's gonna come back and I'm gonna water it down even more for the second coat because I don't need that as thick. I just need that to kind of act as a top coat to reinforce the color uh, rather than establish a solid base coat. So we're gonna do two coats. Some of these may get three coats but that second and that third coat are actually more watered down than the first one.
This is pretty simple really as far as what we're doing here with our watch, but there's two important things to note with this is number one, I've watered this down just a little bit more than it normally is. And once I put it on, I come back with a damp or a wet brush and I move it around to where I want it to be, especially on these smooth armor panels where you can kind of see the streaking there when I first put it on. We don't want that, right? We want that to look smooth. We want it to look more natural than that. So once I've put the Nolan oil on, I'm going to come back and I'm going to move the wash around where I want it to be. But also with that, one of the things you have to be careful of, sometimes you move it around and it gets in those recesses and then it pools, especially as it's drying, gravity does its job and pulls the paint down or pulls it towards the crevices. So make sure that you're coming back and just with a damp brush, you pick up any paint that's pooling too much into those recesses or into uh, those parts lower down on the model where gravity is gonna pull it towards. Now, for this, you're gonna see that we pulled out the dry brush and there's a couple of reasons for it. First of all, this isn't straight silver at first. I mixed some silver in with our original dark aluminum to kind of create a transition between colors. And then we do go up to a pure silver here. And this color is a little bit harder to dry brush with because it is an airbrush color. It's a little bit more watery. It's very strong. You gotta get a lot of it off your brush and be very careful when you're painting because it is strong. It's very strong. But really I'm being very soft with my touch here, especially when I first put the paint on the brush and then put the brush to the model. Um, as I work off some of that paint, you can be a little bit more firmer with it. But for the most part, we wanna be very soft. And all we're really looking to do here is to kind of buff the model. Um, we're not looking to pick up a lot of edges. We're not looking for kind of typically what you have out of a dry brush, but really what you can see here is not as much that a color difference is being made, but you can kind of see some of that streaking and some of that unevenness of the base and the wash is being buffed out by this silver color here. And you'll see it more once we get to the armor panels on like the legs. You can kind of see how it's just going from being a little bit more of a, a splotchy metallic color to being a very buffed and, and shiny looking color there. But I do find that this is the easiest way to kind of get a metallic color that looks smooth and has, has a good overall look to it. Doing it with a brush, if I was to highlight this all up, would have been incredibly tedious and I don't think would have looked as good as this bright dry brush does because I think it does give it that very natural buffed look of metal because it's not covering the entire surface um, and it, it really kind of brings that metallic color to light and makes it look like a more natural metallic color.
Now it's a little bit of a challenge here. We've got to be careful because we've already put in our silver colors, our, our steel metallic colors. We've already put in, you can see on the helmet, our red and our white, and we don't really want to mess this up. So we have to be careful. Um, but I wanted a bit of a brighter gold color and we're going to work up to that. I wanted one that was very shiny, not, not really a worn one. I, I wanted it to have um, kind of that medieval knight glistening shining armor look and we're just going to base coat it in some areas this is going to take three different coats to do um, there's a lot of gold on these models so just take your time and be careful you don't want to make a lot of mistakes this is where it's important to practice a lot of awareness and a lot of brush control
When painting these rather large sections here, you're going to see that a lot of that black underneath that I'm painting over is showing through. It is the necessity of painting with metallic colors is you put them on thick and they're very thick. So we'd rather make three or four coats um, where you might normally need two coats with a normal paint. You're definitely going to need three or four with a metallic paint if you want to keep it from looking streaky. So just being patient here, just making sure that I'm getting my paint smooth and it's okay if a little bit of that black shows through because once we put the wash on and we start putting highlights on, that's not going to show through as much. It's, it's going to do a lot, but we want to make sure we do multiple coats here instead of one super thick coat that's going to show brush strokes and it's not going to look good. I don't normally use Reclaim Flesh Shade as my shade for a lot of my gold. Um, it's a good color, but I, I use a lot of sepias and things like that normally. But I did want this to be a much brighter gold. And the Reclaim Flesh Shade does a great job of kind of tinting it a little bit, providing some, some subtle shadows there, uh, but not really changing the temperature too much of the color itself and so that's why i went with this and we're going to put it all over once again be careful of cooling this you can be much softer with much uh lighter handed with than i was with my null oil over the steel but as always with washes watch out for pooling because that can really it can do a lot to ruin a good paint job
we switch and this actually is a straight elven gold we didn't go and mix it up uh, i feel like these colors in particular do really well jumping from one to the next so i didn't feel like i needed to mix them together and we're just going to highlight a lot um kind of going around seeing where i feel it needs to go it's very subtle like you can see it here it doesn't even really look like it's making any color change until you kind of move uh, the part that you're painting to a different angle and then you can kind of see how it's catching the highlights and that's exactly what we want a lot of times when highlighting especially on large things like this you want very subtle color jumps because those lines between highlights are really going to stand out especially on larger models and if you want that transition from one color to the next to be smooth it's got to be very subtle so like you see here it doesn't look like i'm making any real changes it just kind of looks like my brush is going over parts but you can very subtly see that it's highlighting and that's exactly what we want is that very subtle highlight up to the next step We've added this heavy metal into our Elven Gold. It's not straight to heavy metal. And we're just kind of picking some edges and some lines, those rivets on the helmet or in different parts of the armor, and just bringing it all up one step. I wanted a bright armor. I wanted a bright gold feel to it. And I feel like the gold is such a heavy accent on this model that I wanted to make sure that the brightness of it really came through as a whole so i'm not going to go all the way up to a silver although i maybe should have but i chose to kind of stop there and i didn't want the gold blending in at all with the steel uh, but we definitely could have taken it up another notch beyond this had we wanted to
there's only a couple of elements on this model uh, that really use a different metallic color than the gold or the silver that we've used. And so we're going with this copper because it ties in a little bit with the gold, but it's different enough. And we're going to do some things to make it even more different as we go on. But it really adds some cool differentiation between the model, uh, putting these, these copper colors on here. And I love copper as a color. I feel like it's just a very warm, inviting color here. But once again, just like the gold, this is going to be multiple coats. It's going to take three coats on every copper piece because we want that color to be smooth. As with all the washes, watch the pooling. Um, let's make sure that we push it towards our recesses. We want to tint our, our flat areas, but we don't want paint pooling in our flat areas. So just wash your wa watch your washes and pay attention to them. With these large flat areas, really what we're gonna focus on is you can kind of see any areas that catch the light a lot. Um, once again, this is another color like our Elven Gold with our gold color, it's gonna be very subtle. Uh, the jump is not huge between the Dwarven Gold and the copper that we used. So just, it might not look like a whole lot of paint is going on, but once you kind of move the model and it catches the light, you'll see it more there. Um, we're just gonna come and highlight everything up gets with miniature painting we're just simply going to do a one color edge highlight all over every single black detail on the model it's tedious it's not my most favorite part it's not what i consider the most fun but it gives this model a little bit of a change where it still has kind of a metal feel to it but maybe a more modern uh, a matte black type of feel rather than the shiny steel and copper and gold that we've been using and I think it really helps to change the tones of the model to give it some different color variations but also to make those metallic colors pop and stand out and look a lot better than they would have the whole model was just metallic colors as a whole. This is just simple edge highlighting, really not a whole lot to be said. Before I did this, I did come over with my coal black color and I fixed any areas where I had gotten silver, where I'd gotten gold or copper or anything else. And I made sure I cleaned it all back up before I came in and I started to do these edge highlights. If you don't know how to edge highlight, um, practice. That's really the best way to do it. You can watch a lot of videos. There's a lot of great tips out there. Um, I'd, I'd be willing to do one, although I'm not someone that loves edge highlighting a ton. Um, but there's a lot of good videos out there you can watch. But really the best thing you can do is just go out there, practice, and learn how to do it on your own.
So here we're just going to take kind of every different part of the model and push it up a step beyond what we've done. We're taking some watered down snake bite leather and we're pushing this back into the shadows. It's a really cool color. I think it has um, this nice brownish purplish tint to it that I like. And we're going to push that into the recesses and uh, even some of the areas that aren't recesses just to tint the model a little bit um, and give it a little more depth. In order to really help our copper stand out from our gold, we're gonna use this violet ink and we're really watering it down. We're being very soft with it. Gonna use it in three, four layers um, and push that into the shadows. It's gonna tint the metal, but it's also that violet's gonna give it a much deeper shadow. And then for our silver colors, to help them a little bit, we're using this Drakenhof Nightshade and Nuln Oil mix. We're watering it down and we're kind of glazing it over, um, really pushing it into our shadows, trying to create a little more definition. You can see how these flat spots, I'm, I'm putting it in and then I'm coming back with a damp brush and I'm kind of feathering it and pushing it out into the recesses or the shade areas um, and off of those kind of burnished areas where I've already buffed up that steel color, um, that silver color to where I want it. Our final touch with our um, armor is going to be coming back and creating these micro scratches, um, picking out some rivets with this aluminum color, it's a very bright, it's a very white looking um, metallic color. So it comes on even over that silver that we've buffed in, uh, it comes out pretty well on there. And just be careful, we don't wanna overdo this, um, but it just adds a little bit more interest to the armor. Absolutely nothing complicated here. We're doing a base coat of white. We're then going to put some athermatic blue over top of it. And then we're going to put some Talisar blue over that. And then come back over with our white again, gently um, picking out the very top ridges of those coils. It's not complicated. I will say as you go with each step of the two blues that we're putting in here, once you've laid them down, um, come back with a damp brush and just wipe off the top of the ridges um, and kind of make sure that color is not sitting really hard on the highlights and that'll help you a lot.
Hope you guys enjoyed that video and thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments of what you thought, anything that you found helpful or useful or things you might even be willing to change. Maybe you have ideas for models you'd like to see in the future. Um, hopefully this helps you, inspires you to paint your own models that maybe have a lot of metallic bits or maybe your own Canis Rex or Imperial Knights or something like that. This bottle was a lot of fun to paint. I, I was scared, I was daunted. I didn't know if I would really enjoy painting it, to be quite honest, but I had a blast, and I had a blast doing it with just a brush. That was a unique touch. I love pulling out my airbrush and using that for larger models, so it was very different sitting down and pouring the hours into just working on my brush and figuring out how can I get these large panels to look smooth, to look good, to come out the way I envision them coming out with a brush when that's not necessarily my go-to for things like that. So that was a lot of fun to work on. Obviously this guy is part of a much larger army that is also now finished and that's my Grey Knight army. One of my eight armies for my Space Marine army project which we are so close to having done. I've now finished the Raven Guard, the Imperial Fist, and the Grey Knights in their entirety. Dark Angels and Blood Angels are right behind them and about to be done. We're so close to being done with this project. And once we are, we're gonna go ahead and give away two full 2,000 point Space Marine armies for you guys to be able to choose. There'll be two winners and each one will get to choose one of those armies that they would like for me to send to them to keep as their own. I'm excited, I'm so, glad to be close to the finish line to be ready to be done with those hey let me tell you guys uh, the channel is so close to getting to 1000 subscribers i love all the support that i've been getting from you guys there's nothing better than having that long layoff during the winter and i was kind of frustrated with it wasn't making a lot of content and whenever i came back to see so many people going hey really missed you uh, was wondering what was going on. I even had a couple people reach out and check in and see, hey, are you doing okay? You haven't posted in a while. So let me say that means the absolute world to me. That was awesome for people to do that. I appreciate you guys. Once again, I hope this video was useful. We're gonna have a lot more coming out. We've got some cool things that we're working on that I am excited to show you guys. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.